Welcome to another edition of Drive of <laughs> to the Riz with Larry and Dinelia. <laughs> okay, we've been Where having some start? really fascinating conversations. Feels like a big split in the split. Yeah, there's a big split in the split. There's definitely a big split in the split. <laughs> <laughs> So, tell us what's on your mind. On my mind is the unification of high-frequency humans. The reason that is in my mind was a very interesting experience I had the past few days, or last week. Right, when we went to the Global Ascension Center, right? Yes. Yes. On Friday, we went to the Global Ascension Center, and... Um, we hadn't actually been there for a while, had we? No, no, we haven't. Anyways, there was a ton, a ton of Sasquatch signs there. And I haven't seen some for ages. And there's a story behind the connection, I suppose. Yeah. There was an experience that I had um, on the Sasquatch. And the full story uh, is on our monthly call for last for May. No, for April. <laughs> <laughs> the monthly call for April in walkwithmenow.com. So if you want to hear the whole story, just join walkwithmenow.com and download the monthly call for April. Yeah, for it's the a long story. story. It's a very long story. <laughs> but anyways, the other day we were at the Ascent Global Ascension Center, which is in Washington, walking around. It's three acres of Gaia sacred land. And um, there was Sasquatch signs everywhere. And I started taking photos and then it occurred to me and I had a very, very distinct message of, hey, you agreed that our signs and our communication were private. Private, yeah. Right, so it's not for sharing. I mean, the Sasquatch are invisible to us, most of us, not by coincidence, but yeah, they by don't want to be. They don't want to be exposed to everyone and interact with everyone, right? Correct. They don't want to be. I'm going to be wearing All that sound is a rainstorm that started now that we started recording. <laughs> it's okay. A little rain don't hurt. A little rain don't hurt. Makes everything green. Right now we're in an explosion of green. And an explosion of rain. <laughs> <laughs> so, the previous conversation was that, you know, they really don't want to be pursued, they don't want to be photographed, they don't want to be known by the larger collective. Yeah, and I think um, they're probably used to, anytime they make a contact with somebody, for the most part, the first thing they do is start taking pictures and, you know, try and show everybody else, hey, look, there's Bigfoots. Yeah, and... and it's like, they must get tired of it. <laughs> So, I hadn't seen any signs or felt them for a while. But actually, our signs of uh, went away after Todd came around. That's true. Yeah, yeah. And he is uh, on a mission, right, to show the world Sasquatch images and pictures. And protect them. Yeah, to protect them. <laughs> show everyone they're real to protect them. Which doesn't make sense. But anyways. It makes some sense. <laughs> You can't protect something that you don't even think exists. When it comes to environment, I suppose you're right. Yeah, that's his mission. Okay, anyway. Sidetracked. Sidetracked. So, basically, when I looked at it, I thought, wait. You know, I said, the reason I'm taking this up because I started snapping photographs as soon as, yeah, I saw as, soon as we saw the sign. It's like, wow, look yeah, at this. I got to take a picture. Yeah. It was so, so woven. It was so impossible to naturally fall like it. It was woven intentionally. Together. You know? Yeah. And there were push downs. Yeah. But there was no way for them to be pushed. I mean, it had to be pushed down. Somebody had to push them down. There was nowhere a wind could push a tiny little tree in the middle of a whole bunch of big trees over. One on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. It was just like, woven together. <laughs> weave them together after they fall. It's like... That's intentional. Anyway, you had to take a picture. So I got the big, hey, I thought we had an agreement. We're back in communication. It's telepathic communication. Um, and here you are, you know, we leave signs and the first thing you do 
Snap, snap, snap. You're probably going to share them with everybody too, aren't you? I said, well, here's the thing. If we want to create a planet that is highly supportive at an environmental level of all the species here, which is what we want, right? Right, that's what we're after. Then, for a Sasquatch, collaborating with high-frequency humans is a key component. Right, you can't just be separated forever. I mean, they're impacted by human activity. So, how do you resolve it, you know? It's like, you can't just hide forever. So, after that conversation, they experientially shared with me something, and then the words came through. And that something was, well, singular people of high frequency, they're having, they are in touch with a lot of those. Right, right. But for it to have any effect on the planet, those high frequency people have to unite. So it's the unification of high frequency people on the planet. Right. High frequency people, there's no harm in being uh, visible to high frequency humans. No high frequency human is going to want to, you know, manipulate, take advantage of, hide, steal, crunch their property, you know, impact them negatively. The high frequency humans don't do those kind of things. So there's no harm in having an open physical relationship with high frequency humans. That's right. And then when that came through, I realized that the next step of our... Split. The split. <laughs> the next part of our the, sigil. Yeah, because we talked about the sigil to remove the veil of forgetfulness from the planet. From those who came to create a high-frequency paradigm. Correct. And now it's time for those people to unite, to become one. Yes. That can happen in so many different ways, and it is happening. But I still detect from working at this level and working and knowing thousands of people who are high frequency and awake, I know there's challenges and I know there's personal stuff that's going on and I know that people are so used to being lone wolves, which is what was needed before, that unifying and creating new systems is like a push. You have to be pushed into it. The other thing yeah. is that today we've got a joke, um, a, a meme from Daniela, my daughter, yeah. and um, it said something in the nature of for you to um, for you to go back work and go back to what was it? Every adult must be vaccinated to work and live in society again. Right now, you did you hear that? Every adult must be vaccinated in order to work and live in society again. Okay, now that needs to be tweaked, that needs to be changed ever so slightly. Just the addition of one word, and that is let me read it again in the way that is actually representative and effective for us. Every adult must be vaccinated to work and live in the low frequency society again. Let me read that again. <laughs> Every adult must be vaccinated to work and live in the low frequency society again. And there, boys and girls, is the that, crunch. That is that. That is that. So that really illustrates what we need to do here. This opportunity is massive. We need to, we have to embody, but also create these systems, society, a society which is high frequency. And we have everybody around the planet that we need to do that. We have doctors, we have architects, we have nurses, we have scientists, scientists we have Fish, students, we have fishermen, we have husbands, we have wives, we have children, fishermen, hunters, farmers, you name it, we have it, we have it. 
basically we create the reality you enter if you don't get a shot. We need to organize ourselves. We have social activists, right? We have lawyers, we have all these individuals. We can step in mass. We can step out of that low frequency society and their structures and create our own. And some of the things that are in that structure that's low frequency, they belong to us, we paid for them. We take those with us, right? So we really need to start looking at this. We need to gather and put together teams of individuals that, and also like at a law level, lawyers, solicitors, and all these type of individuals who know about how to reclaim or claim what's ours and step up, you know, do it. Actually create these structures and society, a new society around the world. So, yeah, this is the next part of it. <laughs> we can do it, and I know we can do it. Otherwise, we wouldn't have manifested the split right now. <laughs> it's a story. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what do you have to say about that, Larry? Well, that's what we're doing. It's happening. How are we doing it? We're driving to the res. <laughs> That's how we do it, honestly. We do it by driving. We drive to the, the res, res and we talk about it, we share inspiration, thoughts, and ideas, and then we go do that stuff with our high frequency friends. We don't, um, as I saw today, worry about waking people up. We worry about finding our people. Yes. They're already awake. Mm hmm. Sigil worked. Yeah. Now it's time to find them. Which means be findable. Which means be who you are. Don't be apologetic for your knowings. I mean, today I watched a doctor with seven hospitals, seven hospitals he owns, who has spent two months hid away in quarantine while his hospitals were dealing with this pandemic. And at the end of about two months, he finally realized all of the terrorizing things that he'd been watching on the news didn't match in the slightest bit the things that were happening in his hospital, his own hospitals. But it took they him were two months. They completely to not matching. Right. Reality didn't match the reality he was being fed. But he still took two months to realize it. But at the end of two months, he realized it. He's like, I cannot hide and pretend that what I see on the news is what I'm seeing in my own hospitals, seven of them, in a giant place with tons and tons of people. There's not anything happening here. And all of my friends who own hospitals, and I call them and they say the same thing, there's nothing happening there. And the things that I see on the TV say that it's terrible and it's horrible, but it's not. So what am I going to do with that? I guess all I can do is share the facts of what I have in my own practice, which he did. And 10 million or 20 million people later, when he expected maybe 15 people would probably see that. He's got an entirely different life. He's something like a, a figure of this is what it is. Just say what it is that you see. Be who you are. You don't need to hide. Mm -hmm. Now he's findable. <laughs> and I promise you, a month ago, if you had went to look for an awakened, aware doctor, he would not have looked like it. <laughs> he would have been hidden away in his own house, hiding away from his own hospitals, practically speaking. Yeah, he did that for two months, right? Yeah, basically he was operating in his hospitals from his house, sheltered in place with masks all over the house and disinfectant everywhere to make sure that he didn't die from this infection, right? When there's nothing going on in his hospitals, and all of, the, all of the, the hospitals empty. There's nobody there. So, yeah. State your truth. Then you're findable be findable and then like you told me last time when somebody's standing there with a big sign saying the end of the world is uh, coming it's not really to convince everybody the end of the world is coming it's just to convince the people that know that the end of the world is coming that they're not alone yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> and you're not alone you're you have to alone. put her mask on don't you oh yeah I do <laughs> that's how we stopped <laughs> yep
<laughs> so we're coming to the rest. We're nearly there. We had stopped to put uh, Lucy's mask on so she doesn't kill the guards at the rest door. <laughs> yeah, but we got on a roll, so. Yeah. Now we'll stop again. Okay, we'll stop again. <laughs> Yeah, earlier we talked about how we felt that their split is split. <laughs> well, there's a second part to the split. Right. And the first one was to wake up, right? And really embody the new paradigms that constructing our new systems. That's really important, that's still going. Yeah. This is what we need to do. But this part, the second part is about uniting Right, becoming one, all the light workers of the planet. Finding each other. Finding each other, becoming one, okay? We need to think of ourselves as a tribe, and we need to unite. So, yeah, we decided to do a card reading um, for the second part. <laughs> Act two, we scene one. We haven't done a card reading for... Um, weeks now. We did a card reading that we were going to, you know, keep for the next while. I can't remember how long we said, but this one is for this part. This the last card reading was to listen to your niggles. Mm. And no, it's definitely one. Let it crumble. Let it crumble. And Gaia has a beautiful plan. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can't remember what else. I think there were four cards. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember them, but this one is going to be asked of our ancestors, our human universal ancestors, and um, the cards that I'm using is by there by Rebella Campbell, Work Your Light Oracle Cards Guidebook. We're going to put the link there for these cards. We have no links commercial or any interest in these cards they're just pretty cards we saw online and we got them yes and they're very pretty they're very nice and we, we use like them. them yeah we like them that's why we use them plus i can't find my favorites <laughs> i don't know where they are <laughs> my favorite cards i can't find them all right so we're going to ask them about giving us how many cards shall i pull honey I think you should pull two cards minimum, four cards maximum. Okay, so I'm going to do two cards minimum for max. I think we'll do two. Okay, two cards that will allow us to focus or guide us. Actually, I think it's guiding. The guiding cards for becoming one as high frequency light workers on the planet. Let's see what they have to say about that. The guidance cards for becoming one as light workers on the planet. All right, I'm shuffling the cards. Shuffling. Whoa! One jumped. One jumped out. Okay. That's one. I've never seen a card jump out like that before. <laughs> that was crazy. That's how I like them. Yeah, I know that you like to do the card that way. All right. Okay. Second card. All right. <laughs> we got three. <laughs> Minimum two, maximum four, so we get three. Yeah, we got three cards, man. All right, let's read the cards. So we got three cards. These are guiding cards to show us, give us information on how to accomplish becoming one as a high frequency light workers, as high frequency light workers, how to become one on the planet. We really need to unite in order to become powerful and effective in taking back our planet. The first card 
is called Answer the Call. What is your soul calling you to do? <laughs> so, light workers, <laughs> yes, very straightforward. Light workers, answer the call. You're being called. Yeah. The second one is deep replenishment. Retreat, rest, be held. So, gather your energies. Gather your energies. The third card is called the Age of Light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. Lifetimes. All right, let's see. This is really exciting. <laughs> I very, very much like your reading. I know, this is amazing. These are great. All right, let me do the, read what the cards say. I'm going to read them in the order they were pulled. Okay. Your guidance is divinely guided. You're being called to answer the call of your soul. It may be scary. It might not make sense. But if you trust your soul's yearnings, you will live a life beyond what your mind could possibly imagine. Answering your soul's calling is not a one-time thing, rather a lifelong dance. Deep down, you already know what you long for, what your soul re yearns for. Whatever you're called to do, that is your calling. Don't overthink it. Don't wait for permission. Just say yes. Most people are waiting for a step-by-step -step plan before they take the first step. But intuition doesn't work like that. It takes faith and courage to answer the call of your soul. And that's why most people don't do it. But you're not most people. You're in exactly the right place to answer your calling now. You don't need to know the whole plan. You don't even need to know where it is leading. You just need to take the next step. No one has had the complete perfect plan. There is no end destination. There is no right or wrong way to do it. And you do not need permission from anyone else. Sometimes the more resistance we have around answering our soul calling, the more important it is to our soul's growth. Okay, you have your marching orders. And you don't need permission. You don't need permission. Just say yes. Just Unite, man. Just unite. Even have that intent. I am one with all other high frequency light workers on the planet. Do it. And then go and create to find your tribe. Okay, the next one is replenish. Deep replenishment. Retreat, rest, be held. The most selfless thing you can do is to fill up your own inner well. When we are running around half filled, we subconsciously look to things and people around us to give us the nourishment and nurturing that we so deeply crave. Nothing can grow in barren lands. You are no good to anyone if you are running on empty. The feminine is bountiful, fertile and rich. Tend to your own well and watch as you amount to, as the amount you have to give multiplies. If your inner well isn't full, you will find yourself craving things from the outside world to fill it. This is our body's instinctive way of reaching for the grounding and nurturing that we are not allowing ourselves. What nourishes you? What refuels your body? What is the nectar for your soul? What brings you back to life? What is your secret medicine? What makes you feel abundant and fertile, overspilling with life? It may be gardening, arranging flowers, getting a massage, using luxurious essential oils, snuggling up on the couch, hiking, sipping a good coffee at your favorite cafe, attending a women's circle, reading about sacred sites, spontaneous bike rides, walking along the beach, or yin yoga. What nourishes you is your medicine. When you give yourself the medicine that you need to be nourished, you nourish all of those around you for there is more than enough to go around. Do something that deeply replenishes you. So, we need to gather our energies. That's what I see and believe that this card is telling us as part and parcel of this guidance. Basically, be responsible for filling your energy. Yeah. Don't expect others to do it for you. You need to do it yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the next one is the Age of Light. Let's find it. The Age of Light. You've been training for this for lifetimes. 
Mystic and sages throughout the ages have predicted this period in history, and you decided to incarnate in the middle of it. There's no mistake that you are supposed to be here at this time of great change. If you ever feel unprepared or daunted by the path that is calling you, know this. You've been training for this for lifetimes. You're way more than the days that have breathed through in you in this life. You're also all of, all of the lifetimes that came before. All of these experiences have polished your soul into the most magnificent expression that is your authentic self. Your soul has many facets. Imagine a f fingerprint. Your soul is a million times more intricate than that. If you put together all the fingerprints of all the people you have been, you would ne not even get close to for fathoming how much of a unique masterpiece you are. You came in with a clear soul plan. You came in with wisdom before, be beyond your years. This is the part of you that belongs, that longs to be seen. This is the part of you that is ready to step forward, that is ready to emerge. This is not the lifetime to stay hidden, but to step forth, to see, to be seen and rise. So, what do you think about that? <laughs> the age of light. It's the time, man. You were here to do this. You were born right now in this lifetime. You're in a physical body to do this. Let's become one. It's time to become one as light workers on the planet. And that also means shine. Shine your light. Yep, I've seen some very good examples of that. Can you tell me of one? Well... <laughs> put you on the spot. Yeah, you put me on the spot. The one that I have in mind is uh, the one that we talked about earlier is a doctor boy who spent oh, yeah. so long stuck in his um, quarantine, wiping everything down with his rags, you know, and antiseptics and masks in his own house. And uh, he um, basically, I think, responded quite favorably to having the sigil that awakens those with their reason for being here, high frequency, high paradigm. And he decided to be seen, and he was seen, and he is being seen. Yeah, that's a really, really good example, for sure. I like it. How about you? Have you seen any? Well, I've seen more and more people that I wouldn't expect to, to be very responsive towards um, seeing and perceiving that what's going on on the planet right now is not something that we should allow, you know, taking away of our rights and things like that. Oh, which also reminds me, I want to tell you that there's a lot of stuff that I can't say on Facebook because it's getting censored. So if you want to know what stuff I put on Facebook, that I mean, I would put on Facebook, but I can't. But I talk about and I want to share with you. Go to IneliaBenz.com and sign up for the newsletter. All the stuff I can't put on Facebook, I'm going to be sending out on newsletters. And those are exciting things. <laughs> that's good stuff. Whatever you can't hear and can't be shown, that's the stuff I want to see. Yep, that's what you'll be getting on my newsletter. So go over to IneliaBenz.com and sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. <laughs> All right, I think that's it for today. And we'll see you on our next episode of <laughs> Driving to the Red.